Hey guys, Postron here. And today let's talk about how I made my first 100 exalts in Sentinel League. Now we're on my live stream on twitch.tv slash Postron. We farmed up quite a storm and not only did we farm a lot of currency for my next build, I also farmed up a headhunter just in case it gets good again. And I also improved my gear over time, which was also quite a bit of investment. So I guess in total, consider yourself reverse clickbaited. But yeah, to mince no words, um, basically what I wanted to do with this farming strat after seeing day one, after seeing a lot of people struggle, um, the, the patch got better over time, but we're still in a pretty rough uh, shape. Uh, I wanted to give people kind of something easy to make currency with. And um, my goals were number one, to make it low investment. And that just means um, stuff like expensive sextants, um, Mirror of Delirium that cost you like 16 chaos per on the map device are kind of disqualified, really expensive scarabs, like for example, Expedition. Now, it doesn't mean that you cannot invest in this strat. We're going to talk all about it. Um, but overall, I didn't want the baseline to be expensive. Uh, number two, no scary rare mobs. As we all know, Arch Nemesis mobs are kind of a shit show this patch. And um, I wanted this strat to also be very friendly towards that. So that means no essences, no metamorphs, none of those things because otherwise we go back to low investment and then you need to actually have gear to do this content right later in the league sure but right now um, there's going to be no scary rare mobs involved so you don't have to worry about that and number three at the start it's really hard to buy maps because not a lot of people are actually like uh, sustaining them very good and they don't have extra to sell them to you so you really just want a strat that can sustain itself and where you don't have to think about maps all the time so with those goals in mind what did they actually do here um, now, there's a few things to this um, that uh, were important to me because I wanted to get the most out of uh, certain things that I think are pretty busted this league, and those are Sentinels and Altars. Now, I want to make something clear at the start. This is very much a Alk and Ghost strategy, and the thing with both Sentinels and Altars is they give you currency per map, which means they will give you more currency the faster you complete a map. So we don't want to slow our mapping down at all it will make us less currency if we go for stuff like legion if we go for stuff like breach blight whatever uh we just want to get in there and get out there as fast as possible so the stuff we're going to run is going to be mostly stuff that doesn't slow us down but still gives us currency altars were already busted last league they basically printed scarabs and while they went down with the scarabs they now give it a new modifier which gives you map currency which just drops orb of unmakings and stacks of awakened sextants left and right you also get two new keystones to work it which we're going to talk about later um it is just absolutely ridiculous altars are even better than last league uh, they're definitely not nerfed just be sure because the these nodes got nerfed nerfed it doesn't matter altars are better than they were last league and sentinels are just great um we're gonna go over it a little bit later uh, but if you're somebody who's like ah, i don't want to deal with sentinels i don't want to press them um you have to realize this is one of the most rewarding league mechanics we ever had probably the most uh rewarding next to like delirium mirror back in the day all you need is some basic understanding on how to use them now uh the next thing is rares can be tanky and take a lot of time even if you have a build that's tanky enough like rf for example that can take hits and you don't die all the time um they are still kind of tanky right why would you stand around for five to ten seconds at some of these rare mobs uh, just i don't know to get an essence out of it i I don't really care about it. We want to make currency here. So we're going to disregard mechanics like Legion, Breach, um, uh, Essence, Metamorph, all these things that can make these tanky, like HP sponge kind of types that just um, decrease your ex uh, your exalt power. And that goes to our last point, which we already talked about. Everything that makes our maps longer gets removed. And once again, that is because we get currency per map. The longer our maps are, the less currency we make from Rituals and the less currency we make from Sentinels. So once again, all these league mechanics are we're not interested in and we're not going to run. But what do we actually run? So removing some of these longer drawn out league mechanics means we have a few left though. Number one, strong boxes. Now these take like one or two seconds or maybe three seconds depending um, once you press them. But overall, they take very little time for how much return they give you. Uh, strong boxes are just really strong overall. And while they're not on the map device anymore, um, stuff like secret operations actually got buff and it's not really a direct buff more of like an indirect one and that's because a lot of the scarab rewards got taken out of altars but it now has different rewards which means though that scarabs overall are more expensive and whenever you proc secret operations that's money so we're taking all the strong box we can get we take the extra strong box 
Uh, we take secret operations, tamper proof. Some people don't like tamper proof. Sometimes you drop white corrupted maps, which is really annoying. But overall, it's just nice that your maps are alked. Basically, you don't have to spam alks. You don't have to open your inventory in between and like try to fiddle around with it. You don't have to un-ID anything. Um, it is just very, very nice. A lot of people forget that. It's not just about the corrupted part. It's just that all of them are rare already. And we're also using the whole wheel here that duplicates currency duplicates uh, maps and also duplicates divination cards. I want to remind people that this is not just duplicates currency in Arcanist Strongbox, for example. It's also duplication currency, like random currency that drops here or there. A Chaos Orb gets duplicated here. An Orb of Regret gets duplicated here. A few Fusings get duplicated. Um, map currency from um, Secret Operations get duplicated. The map duplication will give you a lot of bonuses to your map sustain. And the Vault of Mysteries, I mean, sometimes you just get lucky like I got here, right? You drop the double doctor, probably not the best patch to drop two doctors, uh, but overall that can happen. But even if you don't get lucky, so to say, just duplicating normal, um, it's like you get double the void, double chaotic disposition, it's still good income over time. And something that strong boxes also do is they synergize, they synergize greatly with the blue sentinels, right? The pan pandemonium sentinels. These basically are like one button push and then everything around you gets empowered. And that is extremely strong with stuff like strong boxes or our next thing here, which is shrines, right? Shrines are also extremely strong with that kind of mechanic. And it can be really, really annoying to have to kind of like gather a lot of mobs, right? They they go behind you and you just, just have to gather them in one screen and then you press the blue one. It's annoying, right? I would rather just open a strong box, see a shrine on my mini map and know, ah, now I can press it, done. And talking about shrines, uh, shrines in general will give you a lot of character power if you use the goal. If you're still one of the people who think this item is a gimmick, I think a lot of people learned that from last league the hard way. I use this one very long, usually until I get my Headhunter. With Headhunter being in its current state, I think the goal is just really, really huge right now. Um, I would just try it out if you've never had it before. It will give you move speed, it will give you regen, it will give you life, it will give you damage. It will give you everything, and you want the shrines anyway, because shrines are good. There's mobs around shrines, so you get free pack size, which is really nice. You get you get faster, you get stronger, which will increase your um, mapping time. You also have Drawn to Power, which gives you a 50% chance that around the shrine, instead of, uh, like, on top of the normal mobs, there's also going to be a magic pack, which is even better for the blue sentinel, right? Uh, you get extra shrine buffs. Um, and you even get some quantity from Covetous Shrines. Just really, really strong overall. And then at the end, uh, as we talked about, we want nothing that slows us down. So the only thing left that is kind of decent is uh, Heist stuff. Now, do note that Smuggler's Caches is the last thing I would add here. They're the least important ones. And I already have all my points. So if you don't have that, you can leave those out, right? Um, now, what I took here basically is... Um, the secret stash down here, which gives us more chance for the smugglers cache. The small ones are actually also pretty good. It gives you increased chance for blueprints, which is not only from smugglers caches, it's global, right? Um, more rogue markers is always nice. Casing the joint gives you a chance that you randomly get a already revealed blueprint, right? Which goes for around about an exalt. It happens here or there, not that often, but still nice to have. And then you also have smuggling routes. I was actually really surprised how good this node is. I never took it before, but if you don't know what this is, basically... Every map, you have a 10% chance that there is this like unique mob in your map. It has like a, a red marker. You will definitely not miss it. And it will drop a ton of rogue markers. And with a ton, I mean around about 1,500 to maybe even 4,000, right? Uh, depending. I think it scales with quantity. I'm not sure though. Um, but basically, it can also, it will also, uh, it, can, it can drop a contract. And what, the thing is, this actually scales with this trinket here, which says monsters have 10% chance to duplicate drop rogue markers. So if you can get this one on top, sometimes the, I don't know, 3,000 rogue markers you drop will also get duplicate. But as I want to point out, these are the least important ones. And if you don't want to sell contracts, you don't want to sell blueprints, or you don't want to run them, right? I have like infinite rogue markers right here. I will bulk sell all of these if you don't want to do that. Um, either you don't have the points yet and it doesn't matter anyways, you just cut those. Um, but what you can also do is just take more quantity here, right? Um, take a little bit more effect of uh, modifiers, which also gives you quantity. You can also go for um, scouting reports, right? You can take this node, you maybe can take this node and this node, and then sell the scouting reports if you'd rather do that. Um, as for what we block, now we're blocking all the pesky legal rewards I don't want. I don't want to run breaches, no abysses. Even Expedition we're blocking. Now, if you want to run Expedition, do it. But since we don't have the notes, it's actually not that juicy. You will drop a lot more Expedition currency from the Sentinels. We're going to talk about that later. 
Um, we're doing, if you want Harvest, sure. Don't, obviously don't block it if you want to run it. We don't want Legion. All of those make our maps longer. Um, we don't want Rituals. All of these are blocked. Now, the two that you can think about is obviously Harvest. And if you want to run Mirror of Deliriums, sure. But I will say is that for this strat, it's kind of disruptive. It's kind of annoying because the map we're going to run Mesa is not really that good for uh, Mirrors of Delirium. And we're going to leave this one here because even if it isn't part of your strategy here, um, if we took this one, it would rob us of the chance to um, get random blueprints or random contracts in our map. I would always leave this one on. Um, now, these blocked ones, the extra chance for content will all give us a chance for strong box, will give us a chance uh, for uh, obviously the um, the smuggler's cash, it will give us another chance uh, for a shrine. But let's go into our two big money makers, sentinels and altars. Sentinels first. I will have a uh, little bit of a um, section at the end where I talk a little bit more in depth. Which rewards are the best ones? Which are you looking? Uh, wh which ones are you looking out for uh, on your sentinels? Also, if you want to know more about sentinel, I would definitely check out Grimrose videos on it and also Firegrass's videos. They have done a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. To figure out a lot of the stuff that I now know, right? So they're kind of like always, uh, all, pretty much always first about these kind of things. Definitely check out the videos. But let's talk about what I'm using here. So number one, we're using the Red Sentinel and the Blue Sentinel, or basically Stalker and Pandemonium. And I can't explain Sentinels to you. Like I said, if you want to know exactly how they work, if you have no idea what they do, uh, definitely check out Grimrose videos. He has very educational content on the basics of it. If you don't understand these and you're like, I'm just going to do this strat without Sentinels, you're going to make like 30 to 40% less currency. They're that good. And at the start, it might seem a little bit weird, but I can tell you it's actually really fun to play with them. So now I'm just going to assume that you have the basics of how these work. Uh, let's talk about my Sentinel train. So I'm mainly juicing the blue Sentinel, and that is because we're using strong boxes and shrines. So basically the blue Sentinel is an AOE um, activation where everything around you kind of gets empowered. Whereas the red one, you activate it and then it just zaps mobs here or there and powers kind of over time. And the blue one is just extremely synergistic, uh, synergistic with stuff like shrines or strong boxes, giving you huge loot explosions. And what we're going for here is um, we basically just path through the red. So you always have to start at the red. So we connect the red. The red one is kind of secondary, but it's still nice to have and pretty decent currency. Now, this node gives you a 10% chance to duplicate non-unique enemies, which is straight up like 10% pack size while it is up, right? You go through here. Um, now, I do take this node here, Stalker Sentinel, if I was an additional beam. If you don't have full power units yet, you can definitely cut this one. But at the end, you really want it because it just makes it faster for your uh, Stalker Sentinel to empower stuff. So if you forget to activate it at the end and you only have like a few strong boxes left or a few mobs left, uh, this will do the trick. And then you will go over to the right side. Now, just to give you a little bit of an info, if you look at this passive tree here, these nodes down here all affect the yellow Sentinel. These will affect the red Sentinel. These will affect the blue sentinel but then there's also nodes in between here which affect all three of them and these are huge if you're for example using two at once so for example found normal rarity sentinels are upgraded to magic rarity this will overall give you a lot better um, sentinels overall and there's kind of like this thing where a lot of people think i'm just gonna hide them from my filter don't hide magic sentinels from your filter they're really really good a little bit more onto that later but basically the two big nodes on the blue tree here is your path here for Pandemonium Sentinels spawn packs of monsters on deployment, basically giving you pack size two times in a map because Pandemonium Sentinels can be deployed an additional um, time each area, which means you have two activations instead of one. And then what a lot of people go for is stuff like increased number of empowered enemies. They go for extra beams to make it a better AOE experience, right? Uh, but what I actually opt to do and what is maybe a little bit controversial, I feel like, is um, I go down here to rewards are more likely to be less common. So if you don't know, Sentinels do not only have a chance to empower uh, with a reward, whatever it says on the Sentinel. For example, here, 1.6% chance for an empowered enemy to have an expedition reward. It also has a random chance to grant rewards. And these could be anything, right, from like armor and weapon, which we never want, or jewelry. Uh, up to like the good ones, Scarabs, Expedition, Sentinel Rewards. And throughout the roundabout 400 to 500 maps I've done, I found this one to be extremely strong and overall give you way better rewards. And I want to make this clear, this one counts for both your Blue Sentinel and your Red Sentinel. And there's also one more thing, and this has to do with a mod that is a little bit overlooked on Sentinels. So we all know the Sentinels that give you specific chance to get certain rewards. 
But there's also a role like this, which is increased chance to add rewards. And this, once again, just as the normal random chance, um, further enhances that random chance and makes this note even better because all the rewards that proc from this modifier here will also now be less common types. So not only does this note overall give you a better currency, it also gives you this mod, which is now actually really viable, uh, getting one more mod that you're kind of looking for and making it easier uh, to sort of breed sentinels to run in your maps. But more onto how you use these sentinels in the map showcase. Now let's go on to the second big money maker, which is altars. Now altars spawn whenever you activate um, one of the two influence types here. For example, in this case, I have Eater of Worlds, but you can also use Searing XR. This can only be done on T14 or higher maps. And basically, whenever you kill uh, the influence mobs that spawn within that map, you have a chance for an altar. And these altars have pretty crazy rewards. Now, there is free type of rewards on altars that can spawn, and you will always get um, an option between two of them, right? Um, one will be uh, something that happens whenever you slay any of the influence mobs. One will be... Um, some kind of reward whenever you slay the map boss and the other will just be a sort of like permanent buff throughout the map and the ones we're looking for are the eldritch minions gains so whenever we kill any mob we gain those right could be an additional gem which can give you like 20 quality gems could just be basic currency unique item is pretty trashy scarab is really strong Drop an additional map currency item uh, is really, really strong. Basically, you will get a ton of sextants and a ton of orb of unmakings from this. This is actually a new modifier. Uh, chance to drop additional divination cards. Now, these can sometimes drop cards that are like 20 to 60, 70 chaos. I personally haven't seen anything over that. Um, then you have also a chance to gain extra maps, making your map sustain better. Now you're going to say, well, how can you get them? It's like a two in three chance, right? So some altars, you will have to choose either the permanent buff or the map boss buff. Well, that's why we're running Mesa. See, Mesa is a map that is always the same. It's kind of static. You always know where the boss is and you can get to the boss where very quickly, right? If you think about a layout like Strand or whatever, where the boss is at the end, well, that's kind of bad for what we're trying to do. Because if you kill the boss first, that means that all the altars afterwards cannot gain the boss specific rewards anymore. Meaning that out of this list, we're el eliminating all of these rewards and every single altar has two choices. So we're going to get Eldritch Minions gains every single altar because only that and the global upside can spawn. Now, don't get me wrong. The um, upsides that the global upsides are also pretty neat, right? Um, but the thing is, overall, you don't want to have to look at every single altar. You just want to see the Eldritch Minion gains and you always click on it. Uh, this will just make you faster overall and make you more currency, even though some of these are definitely okay. But now that we established that, we have to talk about the two new keystones that got introduced this league. Uh, number one, Eldritch Gaze. So all the upsides you saw right now, the 1 to 2%, 2 to 4%, this gets scaled 50% higher with Eldritch Gaze at the cost of every altar having an additional downside. And this is not as bad as it sounds. I was actually kind of the doomsayer type of guy who was like, this is going to be way too rough. You probably don't even want this before you got a decked out character. It's not that bad overall, right? Um, the uh, downsides don't really stack that much. For example, an enemy has 100% chance to spell suppress. Now every other, uh, like it can't have a 200% chance to spell suppress or at some point it's going to be capped on resistances or whatever. So it's actually not that bad and it is a lot of reward for that and the second one is pretty rough though but this will give you a lot of currency so wrath of the cosmos makes it so that um for each altar you found in an area you have a 25 chance to duplicate a eldritch currency straight up when it drops and you also have a 25 percent chance for either lesser or greater eldritch currencies to be upgraded to grand currencies so that means that whenever you have like four altars for example right four times 25 percent chance you have a hundred percent chance that whenever you would drop one lesser eldritch icker you instead upgrade that one to a grand and you double it and as you can see here i have a lot more grands than lessers and greaters now one thing i want to say is there's also a downside to this crazy key keystone and that is players take 25 percent increased damage from enemies for each eldritch altar used in area which will basically mean that at four altars you're taking double the damage at eight altars which doesn't happen that often but still you're going to take triple the damage. And that can be really rough. If you're running around with a trapper or something that will just get one zap by everything. Um, I want to say this, right? If you're fine with dying here or there and you have a squishy character, I would still take this because you can get more currency power 
which means you can make your character stronger, which then at some point you're not going to die anymore. Um, but what I will say is if you're still in the leveling phase, right, you're like level 85, 86 or something, um, just unspec this. You'll probably lose like seven. I mean, I'm just pulling these numbers out of mass. Uh, my, my feeling would be like something like five to maybe seven, eight percent of your currency gains. But overall, it's important that you level up, right? You get your character stronger. So that is just something that you have to tackle with. Um, I actually leveled while I had this one from level 93 to level 95. But that really depends on your build. But wait a second, we forgot something, right? So we talked about everything. We talked about having a strat that has no scary rare mobs. We talked about low investment. We're going to do a map showcase in a second. Uh, but what about your map sustain? It's actually pretty damn hard to sustain maps this league if you just want to sustain one. Well, we'll be using one of the new keystones, which is probably the most underrated thing I've seen this league in total. It's actually crazy. I've only seen like one Reddit thread about this. Um, but this note is basically sleeper op so shadow shaping's first line here maps found cannot be your favorite map is actually insane and i'm going to talk about why now the second one maps found in your maps have plus one percent chance to have a special implicit modifier for each different map your favorite at the end you will have like 12 maps favored so whenever you drop a map you have a 12 percent chance that that has like stuff like 10 rogue exiles and it's implicit right or an additional legion encounter five strong boxes stuff like that so it is pretty okay but i just want to make sure that you understand that is not why we're running it it's cute but that's not why because we are running this for map sustain now if you look at my atlas here for a second i'm gonna put myself a little bit to the side here you will see something interesting we're only running two wash stones now i have all four but i choose to only use two and i'll quickly explain why so if i had all my wash stones in right each and every one of my maps would be T16, starting with down here, Aurid Lake. Which means that if I favor like 12 maps, for example, I would just basically take those out of the mod pool. But there's in total 115 maps that I can drop. And let's say you you didn't take this node, right? And you just favored like normal. You favored all mesas, right? That is 12 times favored, which is kind of like a weighting of 120, which in total will come out to around about every second tier 16 map you drop will be a mesa but as i can tell you this leak that's actually pretty rough to sustain it kind of works but it kind of doesn't i'll give you a way easier method here what you do is you remove two wash stones and what that does is some of the maps down here will now get downgraded now let's look for mesa here mesa is a tier 15 which is basically no downside from a t16 right everything we can do in a t16 we can still do in a t15 we can still activate eater of worlds but what happens if you look at this passive tree is if we type in tier 15, you will see that there is a total of three, four, five, six, seven tier 15 maps. So with shadow shaping, if we favor all the other tier 15 maps here and we look at the keystone once again, maps found cannot be your favorite maps. That means necessarily that the only tier 15 that can drop will be Mesa. Now, before I used this keystone, I was running around with like three to five Mesas and I was kind of struggling, right? Sometimes I would get, uh, get around with eight. Sometimes I would only have one left and I would have to buy some. It was really damn annoying. But with, since I started this like two days ago, I've just shot up in map sustain like crazy. Uh, so overall, this will make it so you can only drop tier 15 Mesas and everything else still drops as normal, but it gets even better, right? Because you still, this only takes six favorite slots, right? You can still do other stuff. And what you can do here is you can choose any other tier, right? I don't know about any other tier, but you have six favorite slots left, right? For example, if I go for tier 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it wouldn't work here, right? But for example, what I did at tier 14, I have six favorite slots left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? I can make it so only one of these tier 14 drops as well. And it just so happens that one of the most meta maps is a tier 14, which is City Square, which is why I've also blocked all the other tier 14s from dropping. And what happens when you do that is basically, if you look at this here, um, City Squares at tier 14, I have 35 here, and then I have like almost a stash type full here and that will be that's basically what will happen uh since you can now only drop city square as a t14 now just to give you a little bit better idea why we're running mesa i just cleared the map real quick and i'm going to show you the layout so we're going to start down here and basically what this map will always have is the outer ring and then a inner ring with an arena with oak in the middle now it can look a little bit different but basically wherever you start you go up 
and then you will get into this inner ring right here and this is where uh, we're basically going to rush to the boss straight up and I already talked about why we rush to the boss first before we kill anything in the um, in the altar section where we talk about altars Basically, we're blocking mods that we don't want. By killing the boss, we cannot get boss rewards anymore. Basically, making it a 100% chance that we always get uh, mob-type rewards. Now, easy accessibility at the start to the boss is one reason we're running this map. But the second one, which is why I like it a little bit more than City Square, for example, is these pockets here. You have one area, two, three, four, and five areas. Um, and then also on the outskirts, often like a, a sixth and like a seventh area that are pretty wide. And this will usually be where your shrines spawn, um, where your strong boxes spawn. And this will be really, really good areas to activate your blue sentinel on. Because your blue sentinel will be better the more mobs are around, right? It doesn't go as far. It doesn't chain as far as some of the other ones. So you really want um, a lot of mobs in a very um, tight area. So those are the two biggest reasons. But then again, also, it's just always the same right if you're grinding a lot of maps it's really nice to always know where you have to go right you go in you clear the inner ring you go out you clear the outer ring and you're back to where you started um it is just very nice when you don't have to focus as much and you can actually focus on some of the enemies i will say though that you can definitely do this on city square as well if you for some reason really love city square no problem uh, it won't really change much you will just have to use t14 city squares uh, as i talked about in the map favoring uh, section but let's finally go into how we juice our maps so i'm currently using uh two scarabs and i'm also using fortune favors the brave now in terms of importance i would say that the most important one is ambush scarabs now gildeds are usually too expensive polished it really depends if it only costs an extra chaos to rust it i would definitely take it but right now rusteds are the most efficient <clears throat> that could change once this video comes out or whenever you watch it cardo scarabs aren't really needed to sustain but Basically, I started off with like five mesas and I wanted to grow a bigger pool of maps. So that's why I used card of cartography scarabs. As of this recording, they were like less than the chaos for a rusted one. So I just threw them in there. I don't think there's any reason not to. Also, you're going to drop quite a bit of scarabs yourself. So just use them, right? Uh, something you can also use um, just in case you want to get a, a pool up is Elder Scarabs. As of this patch, you can actually use several influences. So you can use uh, Eater of Worlds and Elder at the same time. The only annoying thing about Elder Scarabs is they can uh, have these Elder mobs that slow you down, which is why I kind of didn't go with it in the end. But to uh, to grow a map base at the start, it's really nice, and they also cost less than a Chaos. That being said, as of this recording, Ambush Scarabs are like three Chaos each. If they go higher than four, maybe just don't use them. I don't know. I cannot predict the economy. And as for why I use Fortune to Favors the Brave... It's basically because of uh, this Atlas passive here. So since I'm using the goal, a lot of people would actually think that I would be using Domination, which gives me four shrines for four chaos. I actually don't really think that's worth it, right? It is nice. It's probably going to pay you back, but Fortune Favors the Brave can hit it. Um, now, it has some dead ones, right? Like Metamorph. If you can't handle a Metamorph, just skip it. This is not about what you get from Fortune Favors the Brave. Uh, Breach is okay. Rogue Exile is okay. Delirium is pretty nice, right? Uh, but the most important part is shaping the valleys. This gives you 10% quantity, rarity, and pack size. So if you just completely ignore what Fortune Favors the Brave gives you, right? One of these random mods. 3 chaos for 10 pack size, 10 quantity, and 10 rarity is actually totally worth it. And then on top, you get any random outcome here. That being said, if that is too much on top of the Ember Scar Scarab for you to handle at the start definitely leave this one out i also started to do this later uh just use no mod whatsoever also you can use sextants which aren't that expensive this league because they drop quite a lot uh, i would definitely use them they're kind of free uh whenever you hit, hit a good one um you just go over to uh mr kirak over here and you buy a surveyor's compass and you save it and then you sell it right um so overall it's actually going to make you money using sextants but if you don't want the macro management i get it but you can only use two because you only have two washstones right uh, now you can do stuff like you switch it in, then you open the map and then you remove the washstones, but that's a lot of work, a lot of micromanaging in my opinion. What I will say though is that all of these moving parts kind of come together into a big one to give you map sustain, uh, to give you more currency. Everything I just talked about <clears throat> will make you more currency than what it costs. So once you have the currency, definitely use all of those. Now uh, let's do the map here. Now usually I do this as a one take kind of right. Um, I'm, my throat is kind of hurt right now, so I might have to cut some things out of here. But basically, we're going to <clears throat> run a map together, and we're just going to see how it goes. So once you're poured into a mesa, um, we already talked about the layout, right? But you're going to start here. 
and you already know from this trajectory that you just have to follow along and you'll get to the boss in the middle so uh, what's really important at the start here is that you deploy your blue sentinels um pretty early because after you do that you want to deploy your stalker sentinel right so at the start, there's going to be some pockets where there's going to be a lot of mobs. You're going to look out for shrines because usually there, there's going to be a lot of mobs. You look out for strong boxes and then you click the strong box and then you activate your blue sentinel, right? So for example, if we go up here, what we can do here is there's not really many mobs here. Sometimes there is. We go up and there we see that's a pretty good amount of mobs. We uh, press two and all of these get empowered. We don't have to kill them right now. We actually don't want to kill them right now because they could spawn altars before we kill the boss right now you can go here and activate it another time now this wasn't the perfect one you can definitely search around but we activated them right we didn't kill anything yet because we want to kill the boss first so we don't proc any altars um so once we killed the boss we cannot gain the map boss rewards anymore which is actually really huge right from here on out our altars are going to be exactly what we want and now we can basically clear the inner ring and we're just gonna clear all of this let's just see what we get we got some some of these some raw currency right all right so i coughed and died my bad i'm just gonna go back to where we were earlier uh so we were here just killing some mobs let's go up here now you don't really want to do breaches like that you don't really want to go into them right but you can do them now what i usually do is i don't activate the stalker sentinel before i cleared all the empowered mobs from the blue sentinel because they can be quite rippy and the problem is um when you have the stalker sentinel deployed and meanwhile you're dying you lose all the charges you go back in and you don't have any charges anymore so you really want to kill all these empowered mobs around the inner circle um once uh, before you activate your stalker sentinel so now we got through the inner ring now you can start wherever you want and now we're going to go through the outer ring outer ring and now we're going to deploy our stalker sentinel so this basically just goes along with us and it's just going to kill mobs as we go now um we haven't really seen any altars yet i would kind of like to be the, this to be a little bit better for um an example map but whatever let's see if we get an altar usually i would say the average altars you'll get per map is like three to four right um, with some of the bigger ones being, I don't know, seven to eight. And usually some of the weaker ones, like for example, this will probably be uh, more like one to two. Uh, I haven't really seen a map yet that has no altar whatsoever, but let's just move on. All right. So as you can see here, pretty easy. Now we got some more rewards from the empowerment. We got some expedition currency, Astragali is right, worth quite a bit. And there we have the altars. And as you can see, there was the reward. I should have uh, should have done this a little bit slower. Right, my bad. Had to stop again because of a cough and here's the thing so we got our second altar now still same map right still same map so uh basically this option up here is the option that you have um for it mobs right so whatever you pick here eldritch minions gain so every single eldritch minion that you can see here i think there's a shrine here uh somewhere oh yeah it's down here um every single minion can drop has a chance to drop additional basic currency items right and then you down here you have player gains so this is global to all the mobs now i would usually just always press the minion uh up here because you don't have to think about it that much um you will see that over time this will be kind of grading if you have to look them all up if you have to look the downsides and whatnot just press on this button here the one that has sort of the minion thing sometimes it's down sometimes it's up always press that one first now this time we didn't really get much we got some basic currency as you can see here my filter is pretty rough if you're still picking up fusings and alchemies and alterations you're going to uh, pick up a lot of stuff in these maps there's going to be a lot of rewards let's just move on so so far we have two altars and um let's just go through here and that is basically the map so as i told you you want these maps to be as short as possible and over time you're going to get a ton of currency but yeah sorry for your sloppy gameplay <coughs> my throat right now is killing me but basically, uh, we got a lot of currency from our Stalker Sentinel and our Big Blue Sentinel. As you saw, it's really important that you get big blue Sentinels in at the start. Around about half of our currency, for example, in this map came from Sentinels. Sometimes you're going to have better Sentinels, sometimes worse. Uh, but these strong boxes overall will carry you. you. You will get quite a bit of Scarabs from strong boxes. You will get quite a bit of just random Divination cards, Six Links, stuff like that. And as for Altars, a ton of your currency will come from these here and you will also get a ton of sextons and a ton of orb of unmakings from the map currency i didn't want to go for a over the top map here sometimes you will get good maps sometimes you will get bad maps it is what it is but at the end here i want to do a section about sentinels before my voice leaves me again but basically i want to call out firegrass because he has a really good video on how to breed these together so if you don't know 
There are certain cores that you can combine these with and make new Sentinels once the charges ran out. And he has an in-depth video on that. There will be everything you need there. And if you watch that video, if you understand it, you make a ton more currency. Takeaway number one is, um, since you will have this note here, found normal rarity Sentinels or upgraded to magic, you won't drop any normal Sentinels anymore, which is really good because blue Sentinels are actually quite potent. And that is for a few reasons. Uh, number one, uh, there are usually like one or two mods you only need on your Sentinel. There's a lot of fluff, like cast speed, um, empowers a little bit more enemies, which aren't really that important. What is important is the base and that it has like one good reward type. So once again, you can just unID them and see which of these rewards you have and you can use them. Um, but what I would say is definitely check out Firegrass's video once again, because then you can actually make new ones out of the bad ones that you have, right? And once the charges run out, for example, you have like Expedition Rewards. Once the charges run out, you actually have a chance to get that again with full charges, right? But let's go over the rewards I'm looking for. Number one is Expedition Rewards. If we go right here, uh, I can show you what I farmed over my time here. That is over 400 Astragalis, a ton of exotic coinage, scrap metal, and a ton of burial and medallions. And that is because this reward type here is crazy strong. You will straight up drop stacks of burial medallions, stacks of exotic coinage, Astragali, up to times four. Uh, whenever you hit a mob with this, you have a certain chance for it. So that is by far the best reward, right? All of these are down here. But number two, Sentinel rewards. Sentinel rewards are by far the second best one. So these two are kind of like heavy, far and above from the other ones. And Sentinel rewards can give you uh, more Sentinels, right? Get more juicy rewards. Uh, it can also give you these here, Jewelry Recombinators. I have 58 after my farming session. And these are like, I think as of this recording, like 8 Chaos per. Uh, the No, actually, these ones are 6 Chaos per. The armors are 8 Chaos per. And the weapon ones are go over 10 Chaos in bulk. You will also drop a ton of Power Cores. And even though I already used a lot of the transforming and amplifying ones, I can tell you that in total, I probably had like 50 plus of these. Uh, they also sell extremely well in bulk. Personally, I wouldn't because you uh, really want to use them yourself. Scarab rewards, really strong. Currency rewards, still decently strong. And also decently strong is percentage chance for random reward type. Now, it's really nice to have this in addition to something else on your uh, Sentinel. But basically, if we look at my Sentinels here, where do you have it? Uh, there's like percentage chance to add rewards, right? So, for example, if you have a Sentinel that has, like, one of the less good reward types, like Divination Card, it's still good. You will get a ton of stack decks. Uh, for example, if we look at here, uh, stack decks, uh, in total, I probably have, like, a few hundred of them just from these rewards, right? But if you have that in conjunction with the percentage chance for a random reward type, since we have the rewards are more likely to be less common, we have more chance to actually randomly get Expedition reward or randomly get Scarab reward or randomly get Sentinel reward. Um, so definitely look out for that mod as well. Once again, overall, um, I will refer you down in the description to Firegrass and Grimrow videos. They did a fantastic job. I would basically just re be repeating what they already said. Um, definitely check that out if you want to make the most currency possible. Um, I just uh, wanted to give a little bit more insight on the rewards so in conclusion what can we say about this farming method so this farming method is low investment and no strong build required and that that is because you don't really kill any harsh rares like essences or metamorph or like bestiary or anything like that and uh, the only thing you need is you need uh two watchstones so basically if you uh for example kill the searing exarch so the two easier bosses right searing exarch and um, the Eater of Worlds, you will already have that. You don't need your full Watchstones, which is huge for this farming method for a lot of people uh, just starting out, right? But even more than that, once you have some currency, you can juice it up even more. Uh, you can use Scarabs. Like I said, I would use every single Chaos I have on Rusted Ambush Scarabs. They're really, really good for this. Um, but later, you can go for stuff like Fortune Favors to Brave uh, or Sextons. So even for a little bit uh, more juicier playstyle this is also really great now if you already have hundreds of exalts this uh this is probably not going to be for you there's probably better stuff out there this is just would work for me then tankiness pays off so if you have a tanky build like rf for example rf is actually extremely good for this because you have explodey you're fast right you don't really need any single target against anything tankiness pays off big time because as we talked about this node here if you can run this without dying it is huge this node is so much currency overall uh, definitely run it if you have a squishier build uh, you will have to think about that a little bit more and at the end just one more time do not skip sentinel i have so many people on my stream who are like 
Yeah, but Sentinels are kind of icky. I don't know if I want to do them. This is one of the most rewarding league mechanics. It's the kind of thing where um, once you do it, you're like, why the hell didn't I do this earlier? What was I thinking? This is probably after Delirium when it came out, um, the most rewarding league mechanic ever in terms of uh, what you get from it and how easy it is to kind of fit into an all can go playstyle. It is huge. Just learn the basics and you're going to be completely fine. With that though, I hope I could give you a little bit more insight on how to make currency this league. I know this league has been kind of rough at the start. GG is trying to fix it. Um, I'm at the point where I kind of enjoy it. I farmed for my next build. I'm pretty hyped. Uh, but yeah, uh, hope you have a ton of fun with this and see ya. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, um, we're moving on to bigger things. I'm still going to do this a little bit more, like one or two days. But we're moving on to our next build, maybe a new uh, farming strat. We're going to see. I have some things in mind. Uh, some of these new keystones are extremely strong. Once again, I would definitely look out for shadow shipping. Uh, this keystone might just be completely busted in a lot of strategies. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.